everybody, Zach again at NewTutor.com coming and making a video for you today. And um, what, you know, every once in a while I post something on Facebook or Twitter or wherever and it's kind of controversial or it gets people's, you know, hair up. And um, I did that this week. And so I posted something on my new Totora uh, Facebook page and it was this guy who uh, – was somewhere in the city. I'm not sure what, what city it is. I had the video. I downloaded it. I'll put it on the screen. And he's throwing a brick or a rock or something through this glass uh, window that's an advertisement. And he pulls down the advertisement. And the advertisement, well, I don't need to tell you what it's about. You can probably see that from the video. Um, so uh, in order to you know avoid as many YouTube um, filters as possible, I won't go there. Because, I mean, I'm already in YouTube jail. I mean, it's just obvious. I mean, you look at my stats, and I mean, it's just so ridiculous. I just, I want YouTube to die a horrible, painful death. Facebook, too. I really do. And, you know, decentralized cryptocurrencies is going to be where it's where that happens. But totally different subject. Um, anyway, so this video, I posted it on there, and... I, here's what I posted with it. Here's the text. Here's the content. So here's what I said. While I sympathize with this man's anger, this is not the land we are to make pure. We need to pray for our father to return us to the land promised to Jacob so that we can make that land pure and be an example and light to the rest of the nations. And so while I totally get this man's anger, and um, I believe, you know, he's it's a righteous anger that, that, that this man has, Um there are people who would say, no, Zach, we need to make this land pure. We need to drive evil out from among us. We need to be, you know, get rid of the wicked. <sighs> I'm reminded of a conversation I had with Mr. Anderson, Stephen Anderson, Pastor Anderson, who um, many of you guys have probably seen my videos I did on answering his Hebrew Roots Exposed video series. And he, we were talking one day on chat uh, back and forth, and he said that because I wanted him to come on my channel. I said, dude, come on my channel. You know, we'll talk, you know, we'll hash it out. We'll be like grown men. And, you know, um, you know, even though we passionately disagree with a lot of things, we can talk about this stuff. And he was like, no, I'm not coming on your channel really for one reason, one reason only. You don't believe that we should kill all of the homosexuals. You know, your Torah says we are to stone homosexuals and you don't believe that. And so I'm not coming on your channel. And I don't believe that. I don't think we should be stoning homosexuals in this land because this is not the land that was promised to Jacob that we were told to keep pure. The scripture is very clear about that. We can go to Leviticus 18. In Leviticus 18, it said very clearly, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. But at the very beginning of this chapter, uh, scripture makes it very clear. After the doings of the land of Egypt wherein ye dwelt. See, the doings of the land of Egypt. Okay, those things that people are doing in that country and that nation, ye shall not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, where I bring you, ye shall not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. See, the nations have their own laws. They have their own ideas of what is right and wrong. But that's not what the Father tells his nation to do. He says, I have my own ordinances. I have my own judgments and statutes. You'll follow them. And I mean, yeah, it says, you know, you should stone a homosexual, but it's talking about the land. You see, you keep the land pure. This is not the land. Over and over again, it says that. Uh, Leviticus 18.4, you shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord. And it says over and over again in this chapter, it talks about the land, the land, the land which you go into. It's this land. See, the nations are going to live however they want, their own ordinances, their own rules. But see, you're going to be blessed. And they're going to live however they want, and they're going to be cursed. And one day, they may scratch their head, look over to where you're at, and say, huh, you know, why is it they get all their crops in on time? Why is it they, get, they are blessed with no diseases? Why are they, you know, all these blessings are coming on them, and, you know, we're over here, and, it, you know, we're living the hard knock life. Why is that? Blessings and curses. You are an example to the rest of the nations. See, right now, we're living you know, in our dispersion. Israel was cast out and made great, meaning many amongst the nations, dispersed. And because of that, 
expelling or dispersion that we are living in. We're everywhere, and we're living amongst the nations of the Gentile, of the heathens, of the pagans. And we have forgotten the Torah. Well, see, now we're living Deuteronomy 30, verse 1 to 3, and we're, coming, we're calling the Torah back to mind, and we're going, ha ha! Now I get some. I, I mean, I totally hear what the Father says. And, you know, we're learning about, you know, what is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. I had not known sin, but by the law, Paul says. And so now we know the law. We know what sin is. And we're looking around and we're seeing it everywhere. It's all around us. And so what do you do? You don't lash out at the nations that you're living in their land of the nations. You know, that was a big thing in the Christian church. And a lot of you know, especially in the Baptist denomination and other places, other denominations. I forgot some of these guys. Some of these, uh, Rick Joyner. I mean, I forgot some of these other guys. These big names out there. They're like, make the world Jesus. You know, force it into submission to Jesus. I mean, we have to take over the education for Jesus, education system in this country for Jesus. We need to take over the media in this country for Jesus. We need to take over the government in this country for Jesus. Take it all over for Jesus. Force it into submission for Jesus. That's what, that's what some of these, you know, groups and ministries um, push and believe in. And I'm like, no, that's not how you do it. That's never been how you do it in Torah. The Torah is an example. You live in it as an example. And those around you who are smart enough will look to you and be like, how come you got all this stuff? Tell me about your God. Because the God I'm worshiping, he's not bringing the rain. I mean, I mean, we've talked, <laughs> it's just crazy. I mean, you look at First Kings, and, I mean, it's all about the rain there. I mean, Elijah's like, no more rain until I speak it. You know, that's how you bring a nation to its knees. I mean, there's lots of ways. But, I mean, that was one we see over and over again in Scripture. And what we see over and over again in Scripture is that the rain is important. Let's go to Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14, 17. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So, I mean, this is just a repeating, you know, theme all throughout your Bible. And, you know, this is not the land that was to be made pure. One day, these people will probably make their own land pure when they look over to the nation that gets brought out of the Exodus and over into that land over there. Uh, the great judgment happens. You know, we don't need to go into prophecy here, but they're going to correct themselves. I'm sorry about the beeps. There's a debate on my Facebook page on vaccines right now. Facebook's never without drama. Anyway, you know, the nations are going to self-correct, auto-correct. When they see the rain falling on the nations who are being obedient, and they look at themselves and say, you know what, we're not being obedient. How can we fix this? It's autocorrect. It's self-correcting. You know, that is Torah. That is how it's designed to work. It's not to force you into submission. It's saying, hey, listen, here's my rules. Here's my guidelines. Here's my judgments and statutes. Here's my commandments. Keep them if you want. Blessings or curses, you choose. You pick what you want. Want the blessings or you want the curses? Because I'll, I'll be happy to give you the blessings, but I'll also be happy to give you the curses because I want you to know how to live. I want you to know what brings life. And some of the things you're doing aren't bringing life. They're bringing death. Two guys are not going to bring life into this world. It doesn't happen. Scientifically not possible. You know, same with two women. But that's the norm today in this land. So while I totally get this guy's righteous anger, and it is righteous anger, our job is not to make this land pure. Our job right now knowing that we are the dispersed, you know, living where we're living. My oldest is out there cutting grass. That's right. Get to work. <laughs> Our job, living where we're living, out here dispersed in the nations, and this nation, is to pray. Hold on. Because I do have a point. He's putting the lawnmower back. Our job is to, while living in this place and where we're dispersed in this nation, is to pray for the Father, just like Deuteronomy 30, verse 3 says, one day after we, we've gathered the Torah, we've, we've started to bring it back to mind and obey it, obey it, we're obeying it in the lands we're dispersed, he will regather us. Regathering. The regathering will happen. Verse 3, Deuteronomy 30. That's what we're waiting for. The regathering to where? Where are we going? We're going back there. Back to that land that we should have been obedient in in the first place. But we weren't. 
And so we're now we're here. But again, Torah is not about making here obedient. Torah is not about making here, you know, in you know, forcing here into submission. It's about there. We we should desire and be praying to go back there. Pray the Father will regather his people like he promised to do. You know, he promised to do it. All throughout the prophets. I'm going to regather you. So you pray and you say, Father, you promised. You promised to regather your people. Bring us home. Bring us out of the nations and let the whole world see the glory of your regathering of your of your people. That's what we ought to be praying. All right, guys, I know it's almost Shavuot. Hope you all have a great and happy Shavuot, wonderful Shavuot. We're going to be going out with some friends and to a party, so I'm really excited about that, getting to see some old friends and um, and meet, meet some new ones. So uh, hope you guys are having a great Shavuot where you're at. And uh, I'll try to be making some more videos. I've been really off kilter lately with doing some other projects. And uh, But I got a lot of material saved up and a lot of material to make into videos. So, All right, guys, go home, read your Bible. Thanks. 